think we're going to get underway. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, we are on Kaf Gimel, Amud Aleph, 103a, if you're using, uh, I assume, Art Scroll. We're about three, four lines down. Actually, the fifth line down from the top of the Amud. We just got through a discussion where Rav and Shmuel had a machloket, whether certain activities would, would require on Shabbat, would make a person culpable <coughs> based on which Av Melacha. On the one hand, it could have been Bone, that was the general claim of Rav, it could have been Makebapatish, finishing, completing a item of work. That was Shmuel. The Gemara previously gave us three examples <coughs> and uh, came to a conclusion why it needed all three cases. It then came, comes to point out a different example of somebody who is boring a hole. Okay, that was on we're on Kaf Gimel, and uh, <clears throat> what happens, why each of them again uh, came up with their own uh, decision that the person is culpable, but based <coughs> on different Av Malacha. Okay, <coughs> and so that's where we sort of ended up. Uh, and as I said, we're on Kaf Gimel, Amud, Aleph, it's about five lines down uh, from the top of the Amud. Zehaklal, our Mishnah gave us a general, if you will, principle. Okay, back there it said, Kol ha'osem lacha umlachto mitkayemet b'shabbat. Whoever does some kind of active work, all right, and that work endures, and we explained that when it said the work endures, it means uh, that uh, the work continues throughout the Shabbat. Okay, Chayav. That was the general principle. Zeha Klal says the Gemara. La Tuye Mai. Back in our Gemara to include what? Mai La Tuye. Okay, what is it going to include? Dachak Kafiza. Bekava. Okay, that what is the Gemara is telling us? That when he bored the hole, <clears throat> it was a very small measure, okay? Uh, basically, as part of a kav, okay? In other words, what, we, what Gemara wants to tell us is he had this stick, and the stick was the length of a kav, and he bore a hole sort of right in the middle, so he would have a measure, okay, by which to use what was a half cow. And so by using even that smaller hole, okay, he would be chayv. Okay. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, Hamakeh bekurnas al hasadan v'chule. So Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel adds, <laughs> Okay, adds the fact that if one hammers, uses a sledgehammer on an anvil, he's also chayev, right? My Ka'avid asks the Gemara, what is he doing? Kind of, what kind of work is this? Rabba Varav Yosef de Amre Travayhu. And the two of them said, et yado, because he's training his hand. Okay, in other words, He's using his hand to know how hard to hit, uh, where to hit, uh, things like that. So, kashuba b'nei rechava. And this seemed problematic to the sons of rechava. The sons of rechava, rechava was a well-to-do individual in Bavel, okay, who uh, had two sons who were so the two of them had a problem with this explanation. He says, based on that uh, interpretation, let's say, 
חזה אומנת, בשבת, בגמר. If someone uh, is, uh, if that's the case, if there is a certain kind of craft, okay, and one is observing a person uh, using that craft, and he's observing them on Shabbos, and learns how to do craft from observation, right? Hachinami de Mechayev, would we say here too, the person then is going to be considered uh, culpable, okay? Remember that uh, in olden times, you used to apprentice, okay, to somebody. And part of that apprenticeship was watching them do their craft. Ela Abai Varava Da Amre Travaihu. But the two of them said, Shekin Mardade Tase. Why? Because Mishkan Osin came. Okay? Because there were those who would beat metal plates in the Mishkan. They would do something, some kind of similar work. Okay? And remember that was the model of the Mishkan. Tanya Nami Hachi. And we have a Braita that teaches this as well. The following. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, he says, Af al hastan. So likewise, he said, one who beats using a sledgehammer on an anvil, okay? B'sha'at mulacha, at the time of his work, chayav is culpable, shekein mardade tase mishkan osinke. Why? Because we say that those who were beating the plates, the metal plates, for the Mishkan did likewise. Okay, we go to our new writer, a new Mishnah. We talked about Bone, we talked about Makebapatish. Now we're going to focus on other Av Malachot. Okay, right? The first one being plowing. Okay, Hachoresh, one who plows, Kolshu, any amount. Okay. Hamenachesh, one who's weeding. Vahamekarsem, one who trims trees. Vahamezared, the kol shahu. And one who cuts, let's say, or prunes plants. Any amount, chayav, is therefore considered culpable. Gemara continues, our Mishnah, I'm sorry, continues. Hamilaket etzim. One who's gathering twigs or wood, im letakem, if it's done for a positive purpose, for improvement, okay? Kol shehen, any amount. Im lehasek, if it's done on the opposite reason, to provide, let's say, for fuel, kadei levashel beitzakala. He would be guilty if he gathered enough twigs and branches in order to cook a small egg, right? Hamilaked asavim, one who gathers a grasses, okay? What purpose is the grass? Im letaken, if it's for a uh, per improvement, kol shahu, any amount, he would be culpable. Im lebehema, if he gathered it for the benefit of feed, for an animal, kimalae pi hagadi, enough that if it fills the mouth of a kid, right, then a, and we mean here a baby goat, okay, he would be culpable. Gemara, lemai chazi asks the Gemara again, what is it fit for? In other words, why? Chazi lebizra dekara, okay, and we're talking about if he threshed, if he uh, was plowing enough to even plant pumpkin seeds, the Kavtagabe Mishkan, because this was similar in respect to something regarding the temp temp Mishkan. Shekain Ra'ui Lekaleach, right? Because what happened? Echad Shel Smani, because in the time of the Mishkan, they needed to plant certain um, 
plants, even a single stalk of a plant. Why? In order to get certain herbs, okay, which they could then turn into dye, okay? Haminachesh, okay, so then we come back to one weeding, vahamikarsem, and again one trimming trees, vahamizared, okay, and one pruning, uh, right, the plants. Tanu Rabban says a brighter. Hatolesh olshin vahamizared ziradim, okay, one who is uh, plucking, let's say, endives, okay. Vahamizared Zaradim, or he is pruning cuttings, okay, green shoots from a plant, okay, or let's say from the swamps. Im la if it's done for the purpose of eating, when would he be Chayav? Kigro because it's for food purposes and therefore the size of a bulk, a fig bulk, he would be Chayav. Im lebehema, if it's done for the feed of an animal, kimelo pihagadi, and now he'd be chayav again, were it enough to fill the mouth of a young kid. Im lehesek, if he was gathering these items for fuel, kadei levashel beitzakala, enough to cook a small egg. Im liafot et hakarka. If, however, he was doing it to improve the soil, in other words, that allow and clearing the land for other plantings, right? Kol shehen, any amount. Now, atu kul, since we've mentioned these, says the Gemara, lo liyefot at the karkaninhu, aren't these other items also done to improve the quality of the land? Rava Baravio safe to Amre Travaihu. The two of them said, Ba'agam Shanu. They taught that according to one view, uh, it's swamp land. I like it to an uncleared field. Okay. Abayam Maris is Abay. Afilu Tema Besade, the love Agas. Okay, even if you say that it was a field that had been cleared. And it's a situation where, okay, he has no intention, right? In other words, in that situation, he has no interest in coming close to his uh, neighbor's field, but he's simply doing it, okay, to, for his own purposes. But, says the Gemara, wasn't it Abai and Rava, where the two of them said, that wasn't the two of them support the view of Rabbi Shimon that basically says, in other words, cut off the head and let him die, which we interpret, remember, to always mean that one act, okay, is ultimately inevitable and leads to another result. Veloyam, right? Lo tzricha, says the Gemara. No, we don't need to say that, except for the reason the ka'avid ba'ara dechavre. We only need to say that if he was working in his neighbor's field, okay? Namely, what we're saying there, <coughs> excuse me, Okay, All right, the, the fact that he wasn't working in his neighbor's field means that the improvement was not important for him. Okay, Matt Neaton. Our new Mishnah is going to bring us now to a new area of Av Malacha, which is going to be the example of writing. Okay, okay. This is a, gonna be a rather lengthy uh, sugya at this point, and I would suggest that as we go through it, okay, that we keep in mind uh, the fact that there were two examples of alphabet that we could use, okay? On the one hand, 
the more the alphabet we're more familiar with is what we'll call Ktav Stam, okay? Which was the style of writing used by a sofer in a Sefer Torah, okay? We've all had aliyahs, I think, frequent enough that we've seen inside a Sefer Torah, and we know more or less how the letters are shaped and how they have tagim on the top, things like that, okay? But remember that there was a earlier style of Hebrew writing. Uh, Dead Sea Scrolls are in, I believe, that style of writing, okay? Where certain uh, letters looked much similar, okay? Now we know, for example, somebody learning to read Hebrew uh, can have a problem with certain letters like a bet and a cuff, all right? Or a tet and a shin, or a tet and a, and a regular tet and a regular mem, okay? So I want us to keep in mind, okay, the style of script, okay, as we just begin to read through uh, this particular Mishnah. You may have diagrams in the art scroll. I wasn't using an art scroll for preparation, so I can't tell you, look at a particular uh, example. Mat okay. Neaton, our Mishnah teaches, Hakotev Shte Otiot, one who writes two letters, Bain Biamino, Bain Bismolo, whether with his right hand or with his left hand. Bain Misham Echad, Bain Mishte Shemot, whether he does it from one letter or two letters, okay? So for example, in a stam, uh, tav stam, a chet is made from two zions with a, so to speak, a bridge on top, okay? So that could be what they're referring to. Bein mishnei simaniot, okay? or if he writes from two different kinds of ink. Bechol shown in any language, chayav. He would be held culpable doing so on Shabbat. Amar Rabbi Yossi, says Rabbi Yossi, lo chayvu shtei otiot, elamishum roshem. But the reason they said two letters is because one is making a mark, okay? Shekach kodvin al karshei hamishkan, because that was the way that they would write on the beams of the mishkan. Leida ezo ben zugo, to know which one is its partner, to match them up. Ma Rabbi Yehuda says Rabbi Yehuda, matzinu sham shem katan mishem gadol. What happens if we find a small name from a big name? In other words, take the example, Shin Mem is the word Shem, but it's also part of the name Shemuel. Okay. Shem, Mishimon, Umishmuel. And the Mishnah gives us an example, right? Nach, Mi, Nachor. Again, another example. Midan, Midaniel. Again, Gad, Migadiel. So those would be example of two words, two letters that still spell out something, uh, even though one's intent may have been to write out the complete name. Let's go now to the Gemara. Bishlema, that's understandable, okay? Amin yamin l'chayev, okay? That a right-handed person would be held culpable Mishum de derech ktivabachach, because that's, if you will, the normal style of writing. In other words, most people are right handed, and therefore we see that's the case. Ela asmo, am I, but why from a left handed? Ha ein derech ktivabachach. Are we saying that that's not a common or normal method of writing? Amar Rabbi Yirmiya. Ba'atad yad shanu. No, says Rabbi Yirmiya, we're also talking about a left-handed person. 
v'tihi ave small diday, he amin de koli alma. And we say the left, his left hand is like the rest's right hand for <coughs> other people, right? V'asmo l'chaye. And therefore, on the left hand, we would hold him culpable, okay? Ayamin lo chayev. And therefore, in that case, are we going to say uh, if he were to write with his right hand, we would not hold him culpable? Ela amar abaye, but rather abaye. Bishole peshte yadav. No, we're talking about an individual who's ambidextrous, who could write with either hand, okay? Rav Yaakov, Bere the Rav, says Rav Yaakov, the son of Rav, the Bat Yaakov, okay, the, uh, the daughter of Yaakov, right, says, Ha Mani, according to whom? Rabbi Yossi, he. This is according to the view of Rabbi Yossi. The Amar Lo Chayvu Shte Otiot, Elamishum Rosha, who said that they only held culpable using two. Uh, writing two letters because it made a mark. Vaha midasefa rabbi yosihi. And here, since we said that the end of our Mishnah is according to rabbi yosi, resha lav rabbi yosihi. Shouldn't the beginning of the Mishnah also be according to rabbi yosi? Kula rabbi yosihi. Our entire Mishnah then is based on rabbi yosi's perspective. Okay. Amma Rabbi Yehuda, Matsinu. Rabbi Yehuda said the following. Okay. Ela Rabbi Yehuda, Shte Otiot. When Rabbi Yehuda says it's two letters, Behain Shnei Shemot, Hu, Demechayev. And there, that it is only in a situation where it's two letters. Okay. Does it seem to be of, right? two different letters? Or is it two similar letters? Vehen shem echad. Okay, and they're really one letter. Lo mechayev. Does that mean then that if he repeats the letter, like the example I gave, okay, for ketav stam, that two zions, okay, on, right, to make it into a chet. Vahatanya. But aren't we taught elsewhere in a brighter? Va'ase achat. Okay? Namely, the Pasuk says, if a soul shall sin unwittingly against any of the commandments of Hashem concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do one of them. Okay? Do one of them. Yechol ad sheyichtov kol Hashem. I might have thought then that he wouldn't be culpable until he wrote the entire name. Va'ad she'aya arog kol ha'begin, or unless he wove the entire garment. Va'ad she'ya'ase kol ha'nafa, or unless he um, made the entire sieve out of reeds, finished the whole thing. Talmud loma me'achat. Therefore, our text teaches, okay, one. I me'achat yechol afilu lo katav ela od echat. If that's the case, then we might say even if he wrote a single letter, he would be culpable. Velo arag ela chut echad, or only wove even a single thread. Velo asa ela bayat echad, okay? Or here too, if he only... Uh, made uh, a single um, pass-through, let's say, benafa, in making the sieve. Let's go on to Amud Beis. Tamud Lomar, Echad. Here the text therefore says one is stated. Ha, Ketzad. How then do we understand this? Eino Chayav, that he shouldn't be culpable. Ad Shechtov, Shem Katan, Mishem Gadol. And therefore we say, until even only when he writes, okay, a short name, right, if we can use that, or a short noun from a longer noun. 
Shem Mishimon O Shmuel is the example. Nach Minachor, Dan Midaniel, Gad Migadiel. So Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Afilu lo katav ela shte otiot vehen shem echad. Says Rabbi Yehuda, even if he were to write two letters, but it was the same letter, okay, or the same type, okay? Chayav, he would be culpable. Kigon shesh, tet, rer, gag, chach. Okay, two letters of the same variety. Okay, okay, now these also are, happen to be uh, words. Shesh is linen, teth is giving, rar means flowing, gag of course is a roof, and chach is a hook. Amar Rabbi Yossi, Sir Rabbi Yossi, v'chi mishum kotev hu chayam? Do we say therefore that he is culpable based on an av malacha of writing? V'halo eno chayav ela mishum roshem. But don't we say that he's only culpable because of the issue of marking? Shekain roshmim al karshe hamishkan leda ezo hi ben zugo. As they marked on the beams of the Mishkan to know which was its, so to speak, partner. The Fichach, Sarat Srita Echad, Ashnein Nisarin. If that's the case, is the Gemara, if they made one scratch, let's say, on two planks, Oshte Sritot Al Neser Echad, or two scratches on one plank, Chayav. Okay, he should be culpable. Rabbi Shimon Omer, v'asa achat. And Rabbi Shimon points to the possible. Okay, then he says that he does one. Yecho ad shechitov et kol Hashem. Okay, he, it's not till he writes the entire name. Ad shi'arog kol habeged, or until he weaves the entire garment. Ad shia ase et kol ha-nefach, or until he does in the entire sieve. Talmud lomar me'achat, says from one. I me'achat, again, if only from one. Yechol afilu lo katav ela ot echad. I may have thought that even if he wrote a single letter, va'afilu lo arag ela chut echad. And even if he didn't weave except a single thread. And even if he did a single pass-through, okay, buy it, the house, so to speak, okay, with the sieve. Talmud lomar achat. Here the text would say one. Ha-ketzad. So how then do we explain this? Eino chayav ad shi'asem lacha she ba he is not to be held culpable until he does a variety of work, okay? That is something that has endurance, okay? Lasting, okay? Rabbi Yossi Omer, says Rabbi Yossi, va'asa achat, okay? Our Pasuk says, and has done one, va'asa hena, and has done these, pa'amim, Shekatav echad al kulan. There are times, he says, Rabbi Yossi, in this new statement, that one writes one item and it implies many. Upa'amim shekatav al kol echad ve'echad. And there are times when one write, might write a number of examples. Okay? Right? Okay, how do we say this? Katani. Okay, so what happens? Okay, it was taught, Meha, nevertheless. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Afila lo katav eleshte otiot. Says Rabbi Yehuda, even if he only wrote, right, two letters, the Hain Shem Echad, and they are the same type. Chayav, he would be culpable. Lo kasha. We don't have a difficulty here. 
ha dide ha rabbe de rabbe. Here he once he was place he was saying his view, another place he was saying his teacher's view. The Tanya Rabbi Yehuda, as we see a brighta that says Rabbi Yehuda says, Mishum Rabban Gamliel, in the name of Rabban Gamliel, Afilu lo katav el otiot, even if he only wrote two letters, Vehen Shem Echad, and they are of the same variety, the same type, Chayav, he's culpable. Kagon, Shesh, Tat, Rar, Gag, Chach, those examples. So the Gemara then says, the Rabbi Shimon, Hainu Tanakama. If that's the case, then the view of Rabbi Shimon seems to be similar to that of Tanakama. Vachi Tema, and if you were going to say in that case, okay, Elef Elef, the Azrek, okay, we have two letters of the same in one word, okay, Azareka, okay, that comes from a Pasuk, right, okay. Ika Benaihu, the difference between Rabbi Shimon and Tanakama, the Tanakama Savar Elef Elef the Azarcha Lo Mechayev. Okay, that that's not really a word; it's just two letters beginning the word. But Rabbi Shimon Savar Kevan De Ite Begal Tore. Okay, but Rabbi Shimon holds. Okay, that uh, since that phrase, that pasuk, is included in a number of amulets or a number of charms, ba'alma in general, chayav. The person who writes it would be culpable on Shabbat. The Memra, the Rabbi Shimon the Chumra. Does this say that Rabbi Shimon is more stringent? Vahatanya. But aren't we taught in another brighter? Okay. The following, okay? Hakodeach, kol shehu chayav. One who bores a hole, any amount is culpable. Hamegarer kol shehu. Okay? One who scrapes any amount. Hamaabed kol shehu. And one who smooths as part of the tanning process, a hide, any amount. Vahatsar bekli tzura kol shehu and one who draws or fashions uh, some sort of a symbol or a picture or something on an earthenware vessel, okay, in any amount, okay, would be culpable. Rabbi Shimon Omer, ad shi et kulo. Rabbi Shimon says, until he bores it all the way through, ad shi et kulo until he scrapes it completely. Until he smooths, tans it completely. Until he finishes the entire letter or picture. Therefore, it would appear that Rabbi Shimon is saying, is coming to teach us until one writes the entire name. So the Gemara asks, And where do you find Rabbi Shimon saying this? But don't we have a brighter that teaches the following? Rabbi Shimon Omer, and Rabbi Shimon cites that pasuk that says if he does one of them, Yachol, Okay, one might have thought that he would have understood his position to be until one writes the entire name. Talmud Loma Me'achat. The text, however, says that he chooses from one of them. Tarit Ve'emahachi, says the Gemara. Explain it 
and say it, I would say it this way. Yechol ad shechtov et ha-pasuk kulo, Talmud lomar me'achat. Until he writes the entire pasuk, Talmud lomar, the text, however, tells us from one of them. Now, Rabbi Yossi is going to come with a new explanation of, the state, of that phrase from the pasuk. Rabbi Yossi omer, va'asa achat, va'asa hena. Rabbi Yossi said, one does, does one of them, does some, one of the, some of them. Pa'amim shechayav echad al kulan. There are times when one would be culpable for one on many. Pa'amim shechayav al kol echad v'echad. And there are other times that one might be culpable for each individual act of writing. Amar Rabbi Yossi, but Rabbi Chanina says as follows: My Tama the Rabbi Yossi echat me echat. Okay, what is Rabbi Yossi's reasoning when he says one from one, hena me hena, these from these, echat shehi hena. It's one that's from these, vehena shehi echat, and these that might be one. And he's going to give examples. Echat, one is Shimon. Me'achat, from these, Shem Mishimon. Heina Avot, or we have an example, these, the word Avot, right? Me'heina, from these, Toledot. From these implies subcategories of work, okay? As opposed to the main categories of work, right? Echad shehi heina, one among these, it would be an example, zadon shabbat v'shigigat melachot, okay? That he purposely uh, uh, went to transgress shabbat, but he unwittingly did certain melachot. Heina shehi achat, these that are one, namely Shigigat Shabbat, that he forgot unwittingly that it was Shabbat, was Don Malachot, but he willingly, purposely carried out a variety of Malachot, and therefore Rabbi Yossi would say he would be Chayav in each one. Now, Amar Rabbi Yehuda says, Rabbi Yehuda, Matsinu Shem Katan Mishem Gadol. We found this example of one short name from a long name. Mi Dami, what is it, what can it be compared to? All right, now I'm assuming that as we go through the next piece of Gemara, everybody is familiar with the difference in the way one writes a regular letter and a sofit, a final letter. Okay, take the example of mem and final mem. Okay, nun, which is bent on the leg, and final nun. Okay, pe or fe and final fe. Okay, so that's what we're going to deal with a little bit now. What is it compared to? Mem, the shame satu. Okay, a mem which is closed, or which we would call a final, mem de shim'on, okay? Like the mem in shim'on, patuach. But that's open, says the Gemara. Amar Rav Chista, says Rav Chista. Zot omeret, satum ba'asau patuach, kasher. This would seem to say that a scribe writing in the Sefer Torah if he came across a letter that was supposed to be a final letter and he made it a non-final letter, that that Sefer Torah is still valid. Metive will challenge this. Why? Because a Pasuk says, Uktavtem, right? When you write it, Shatehek Tivatama, it should be perfect. In other words, clear, no mistakes. Shalo yichtov alfin aynin, that one wouldn't write 
an aleph like an ayin, ayinin alfin, or ayins like alephs. Remember, because they're both silent letters. Beitin kafin, bays like a kaf, kafin beitin, or kaf like a bays. Gamin tzadin, gimels like tzadi, tzadin gamin, or tzadis like gimels. Now, again, I'm going to point out that they may be referring to the older alphabet that the style of writing that was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, okay. Daltin Ration, Dalids like Ration, Ration Daltin, Ration like Dalids, Heihin Chitin, Heis like Chets, Chitin Heihin, Chets like Heis, Vavin Yudin, Vavs like Yuds, Yudin Vavin, Yuds like Vavs, Zainin Nunin, Zions like Nuns, Nunin Zainin, or Nuns like Zions, Tetin Fifin, Tets like Fays. Rabbi, yeah. th this doesn't have to do with Shabbos anymore then, this section. It, not directly, right. Since it, it's a, a digression in terms of going into the of course, it shouldn't be done on Shabbos, yeah. but it's also telling in terms of uh, writing, right? In general, okay? Titin kfufin, okay? Pshutin, pshutin kfufin, okay? Or one shouldn't have bent letters like straight letters. In other words, final like non-final. Pshutin kfufin, or non-final, uh, final like non-final. Mimin smichin, mems like samachs. Smachin mimin, or samachs like mems. Stumim ptuchin. Now we get to another example. In the Torah scroll, remember when he's writing a Torah scroll, the, the sofer has to leave a certain finish a line and leave the rest of the line open, or he can start the, the new, let's call it paragraph, on the same line, okay? So if he leaves it open, it's a patuach. If he writes on that same line, it's closed. So that's what they're referring to. Stumim patuchim, closed as open. Patuchim stumim, open as closed. Parasha Ptucha, Lo Ya'asena Stuma. Okay, clarifying that. An open Parsha, he can't make it closed. Stuma, Lo Ya'asena Ptucha. Okay, closed, he can't make it open. Okay, right? Katva Ksheira, if he wrote it as, if it's supposed to be written as poetry, okay? Remember like Shirat Hayam, or Ha'azinu is written in a certain style in the Torah called brick on brick or brick on mortar. Okay? O shekatavita shirakiot seba. Or he's writing it, okay, as poetry continues. O shekatav shalo biyada bityo. Or if he wrote it not in appropriate ink. O shekatavita azkarod bazahav. Or if he wrote the divine names in gold lettering, Hare Elu Yiganazu. In all these cases, that scroll has to be set aside. Geniza. Right? Who the Amar? It's Rabbi Chista who says the Amar, Kihai Tana, like the following Tana. The Tanya Rabbi Yehuda, as Rabbi Yehuda ben Batera says, Neamar Besheni. Beniskehem, Beshishiv Unisacheha, Beshvi Kemishpatam. Okay? In different sections, right, of the Torah, we have similar words. Okay? Right? We have in one case, on the second day, their drink offerings, on the sixth day, and the drink offerings thereof, and the seventh day after the ordinance. Okay? Hare Mem. Yud Mem Mayim. 
This spells out the word Mayim. Mikan remez lenisu chamayim min haTorah. Okay, and here he suggests this is an example of a drasha in which we can give that uh, the Torah is hinting about the practice of the water libations. Okay, so the Gemara is now going to ask and continue uh, its discussion which we'll just go over for a brief time. Mi dami, how can you compare, it says. Patuach v'asau satum, if it was an open letter and he made it closed, okay? In that case, iluye, on top of kaf dalid, iluye kama alele, aren't you enhancing the sanctity of the, of the, uh, section of the letter. The Amar Rav Chista, as Rav Chista says, Mem v'samech shebeluchot v'neis hayu omdi. That the Mem and Samach on the tablets, right, stood as a miracle. Okay? And that's where we're going to stop uh, there, okay? Because then they, it continues to get a little bit complicated in terms of uh, some of the other letters. Okay, so we'll stop there for today and we'll pick up tomorrow on Kaf Dalid. Okay, everybody, stay well and <coughs> take care. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Be well. Have a good day. Thank you.